I, I, thank you, Santa. So we're recording and hope everyone is fine. So I really would like to welcome everyone. I'm really super happy because um, Pia, which is an outreachy uh, mentee, will be or interned. I don't know how it's, uh, we should say it, probably interned. She will present you what I, I dreamed about when I started Galaxy, which uh, was uh, like a starting point, an entry point. I really struggled when I started as a newcomer and external to the Galaxy community and the bioinformatics. Uh, but what Pia has done is uh, beyond, it's really for everyone. So we really would like to get your feedback on uh, what Pia has done. And uh, Pia, you will introduce yourself. Um, I will leave it to you. And do you want to share your screen or? Uh, I can share. Yeah. yeah. OK, super. Thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Pia. I have been working on the Get Started page with Bea Anan since December. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I like to do pottery. I'm curious. Um, uh, I really have enjoyed my experience overall with Galaxy and the Galaxy community since I started. And I'm really happy uh, that I can share my work and this has come to, to an end where I can show it. I will be presenting. I have made a slide share. Uh, so my project was, is the onboarding process for new communities and newcomers? Big question, why is the onboarding of newcomers? Uh, we found there was a clash of knowledge, complexity and feelings um, of being lost in translation between established members and the continuous flow of newcomers to retain and support newcomers, boost contribution, and also to attract and support new communities and promote symbiotic relationships between disciplines. Then we can see the problems, which we then will see the solutions. Uh, Galaxy is overloaded with information and unknown terminology, which makes, which means that information could be hard to read. There was no clear starting point upon joining the community for both bioinformaticians or non-bioinformaticians, and there were repeated questions found on Outreach's Gitter channel. Other Gitter channels seem too professional, but this will be addressed later as uh, we learn a, a good uh, lesson with this problem. Communities that aren't addressed in Galaxy yet may not feel welcome to use the platform. And these were some comments I found on the Outreach's Peter channel. I really need help navigating the project. Please help me. I have an error. It's overwhelming. There's many resources available. And another person said they haven't been able to contribute much in the lobby channel in Gitter because they see a lot of professionally inclined questions. Also, very few participants got the grasp, uh, grasp of Galaxy. There was lots of hand holding requiring more work for the mentors and many bland questions for baby feeding, both in channels and the uh, issues that were created in the participation period. Let's see the solution for these problems. First, we have the Get Started page. It's a guide to assist newcomers with digestible information. The get a clear pathway step-by-step step for any newcomer by understanding their needs and blockages. It will ease the onboarding by providing all the necessary information in one place only. It will avoid frustration and it also invites and promotes participation and contributions. We have the Galaxy Glossary, which aids newcomer and overall users understand the Galaxy jargon. It provides easy to understand definition and URLs for each term. It addresses Galaxy users that may not know English as their first mother tongue. And it will have a common language and simplify getting to know Galaxy. This was also a solution that was the matrix box, which would have made Gitter, uh, the Gitter channel more accessible and approachable for newcomers. Uh, I wanted to promote and aid people in asking well-formed questions, avoid time-consuming questions, also blank questions, misinformation, and clear ones, the ones that I mentioned that require baby feeding, and it would automatize Gitter's admin's job. But this is uh, what I meant when 
uh, with this solution instead of solving a problem, it would have created a new one. Uh, we didn't check with those that intended to cooperate with where the maintainers and the developers of the channel. Um, they said that it wouldn't be truly workable for them. So uh, we decided to kill this idea. It was a good, um, uh, a good process though. I learned quite a bit about Matrix and, and Python, but um, it wasn't the best solution. The third solution is set your own community page. It shows different communities the path to start their own in Galaxy. It helps decide someone that is unsure of adding their community to Galaxy. It also points toward good practices. It facilitates information, tips, and mistakes when creating a new community. And it also will avoid the creation of unnecessary tools. So let's see the uh, pages. We have this new button upon joining the hub, uh, which we hope will help people go straight to the point. This is the main page, the get started page. It has a welcome message that says this is a step-by-step -step suggested pathway for you to follow as a newcomer, a student, an expert. Uh, I truly wanted to address anybody that would uh, be uh, a newcomer. It didn't matter who they were as long as they were new to Galaxy. Uh, we have four steps. The first is get acquainted with Galaxy terminology, which points to the Galaxy glossary. It has a, a short definition that it contains the terminology, acronyms, and the definition. And we uh, give a, a warning that as a newbie, they will probably skim through this list, but later on, they will uh, go back to the glossary. Uh, there are around 30 or so um, definitions. We have administrator uh, or admin API, lots of, um, Galaxy Community Conference, GCC, GMN, GTN, lots of acronyms uh, that are used around Galaxy. And when I first joined Galaxy, I truly was confused and I wish I had this um, helping page. Uh, we have job, open source, paper cuts, planimo, uh, quota. Each of these uh, definition also, if they have a, a page or a, a URL, it points to that page like GTN, uh, the GMN, uh, Galactic News, Galactic Blog, and such. If there is any other word you may need uh, or you may think of that could be in the glossary, please create uh, uh, an issue or, or just uh, ask in the chat to be added and be added. I have also added a go back to the top because it's a bit too long and I think it's uh, helpful. I don't know why it doesn't work, but it, it works, it tends to work. Um, step number two is get familiar with Galaxy. Um, I pointed to the public servers that we recommend using, the ones I was recommended when I first started with Galaxy, which is the US server, European and Australian server. And I also find that they should probably create a, a user to keep track of their histories and workflows. Then there is a table of tutorials and tools. Uh, the, there are lots of tutorials and tools in the GTN and overall in Galaxy and in the Galactic Search, but I went through many and I thought these were the top-notch um, tutorials. There's also having slides, hands-on, recording, interactive, so depending on your preferred way of learning, you could choose which one uh, would be best for you. I have added events. So instead of having going to Galaxy tutorials, so if you wanted to go a bit further, you may check the Galaxy events and see if there is any training upcoming. I point to the GTN. I point to Galaxy help and bug reports. So if people don't know how to, create and are unsure of what to do. Um, I tell them to check the issues page, which are the already known issues, the GitHub issues, the Galaxy Help Forum, or if not, if they haven't found their answer in any of those places, they may create an issue. I point to the mailing list, 
um, I point to the Galaxy Publication Library. If there is any other curious person that may want to know what the Galaxy community is doing, step number three is your place within the Galaxy community. So um, if people want to wonder what the Galaxy community is, they are part of the community, but also the, uh, I point to the already established Galaxy communities. I have added Galaxy communities of practice in the Galaxy page. Um, go to Galaxy slash communities. We have the regional communities and then the communities of practice, which are topic kind of base, ecology, metabolomics, climate. Uh, I have added the interacting communities with Galaxy, Bioconda, Open Life, Outreach, Bioconductor. Conda was already there, but Outreach and, and Open Life Science weren't. The Galaxy Mentor Network is also here, DCC. If they don't can't find themselves there or don't feel identified, I point to the Set Up Your Own Community page, um, which also has a path that they should follow if they feel like they don't find themselves, which is learn the basics about Galaxy. So they go to the Get Started page and then they go into the Galaxy Mentorship Network. They should probably learn about tool development. I point to that also. They should get involved. So they should reach out to the working groups. They should participate in the Galaxy events. They should chat in the lobby of either or matrix. And also they could set up a mailing list when starting their own um, community. It has a do's and don'ts list also. So this is basically um, mistakes they can avoid uh, of other communities that have already created the communities and which they knew. Um, so they should take the time to learn the basics about Galaxy, ask if a tool for what you need already exists, request your tool to be reviewed, don't be a, a lone wolf, and the steps on when you happen to need uh, a tool, make it, write the training, set up an event, avoid setting, um, setting up very specific tools and, and avoid hearing, not hearing feedback. Uh, number four is take part and contribute to Galaxy. So if you have already followed all these steps, you can then start contributing, which points to the contributing page. It, you can contribute with code, training materials, uh, ideas, hosting events, helping others, and also starting your community. You can go to the working groups and participate, and you could also go to the Galaxy Mentoring Network, which is the page uh, the other interns have created. This has basically been my, my work with Richie. Um, I would also like to um, give some of the expected benefits, basically. For community, for the overall Galaxy community, this will speed up the onboarding process by having newcomers easily read the foundation of Galaxy. It will increase and sustain participation and interest in the working groups and it will boost diversity with more contributors and also communities. For mentors, which is basically, um, it could be mentor for the Galaxy mentoring program for Albrichi, but it's also experienced uh, people inside the community. It's a solid place to provide more fulfilling questions and issues will create richer communications between mentees and mentors, and it will sustain participation with less handholding and thus less stress. And for mentees, it's the same case as before. Mentees can be mentees for the uh, outreach, the GMN, or also newbies or newcomers, people with, with uh, less experience. It will easily digest and get to know Galaxy. It will avoid initial burnout of the learning process, which uh, in the outreach initial period was quite a bit. It will make more relevant contribution and questions. 
it improves chances of being selected for those that want to participate in outreach and it will create better matches for the GMN. Uh, thank you for your time in being in this uh, Zoom. And if you have any questions or suggestions, I'm open to those. Thank you, Pia. That was a very comprehensive overview of what you have done. So what question do you have for Pia? Uh, yes, Eli. I saw a hand going up. Oh, sorry, that wasn't my hand raised. I was clapping. Okay. Um, but I will say I don't have any particular question, but I am fairly new to Galaxy and trying to get it off the ground in a new community in material mm -hmm. science. So this all looks like really interesting stuff. Um, so thank you. So that's great. You can give us yeah. feedback. You will be able to give feedback on what yeah. has been done. <laughs> because it's not like a dead document, Pia. You mentioned it several times. That it, it can evolve. Uh, it will evolve, sure, yeah. yes. Can, yes, can you talk? A... I'm sorry. Uh, sure. No, go ahead. I was going to ask if you can talk a little bit more about the um, yeah, the uh, matrix conversation being too professional or, you know, like that kind of vibe. Are there other things that we can do in those channels to make them more approachable, do you think? When we approach the uh, maintainers, mm -hmm. we uh, ask this and they said people go there with well-formed questions after investigating and uh, exploring the galaxy. So we weren't sure if, if, if this was especially made for outreach, like if you are just a newbie without knowledge of anything basically related to galaxy or programming or such. Um, when they went to the Twitter channels, if you go back and back and back in the chat, you just see very well from questions, which is good because people go with very, very well from questions. But maybe if you have a, not such a well formed question or not such a profound question or a very specific question, um, people may not feel inclined to make it. It's a bit um, not overwhelming, but uh, it may stop people from asking questions. But we yeah. don't know if these people don't end up asking questions. I wonder if this has to do a little bit with how we've uh, broken out specific channels for sort of every niche, right? So when we had one big channel, just a dev IRC channel that everyone talked in, there was always sort of just chatter and banter. And I mean, it was a lot, right? So we, we broke things out for good reasons. Um, but I wonder if there was, you know, just sort of more, I don't know, is that a is the lack of informal conversation in some of these channels that's precluding people from jumping in um, something we should consider uh, in sort of um, fragmenting our communication channels more in the future? I think it's a good idea to have and to try, uh, both in this um, Get Started page and in other places inside the hub. We point that they shouldn't be afraid to ask questions, even if they are, if they feel it's a dumb question, if they feel it's an, a question they should know, they should still ask it. But I don't think it's a bad idea to maybe have a um, more complex channel for complex questions. Do you mean divide channels in what, like, example, or the backend channel? How right. Would you um, no, I was saying we should, we should be, has, we should, be hesitant to divide things into more channels potentially if you know so like the ui ux channel is the one i spend the most time in um last week you know there were days mul multiple days when there are no messages so you don't want to be the person to jump in and sort of break the silence i guess and ask something weird <laughs> um but if it's if it's a channel that seems active and just sort of people are just talking um, then it's not weird to just hop in and answer a question. So I'm wondering if we should, I mean, maybe maybe it's just that we need to point more people towards um, the lobby and dev and have more casual conversation in those channels, um, you know, saving the work group specific channels for 
just sort of work group business or I, I, I don't know. I don't know though, that, cause then that's weird. Um, that's weird too. So I don't know. I don't have a solution. Nice. I'm just. <laughs> Let's say that's like definitely been a point of confusion for me where you have like these, these groups that are labeled as like working group tools, working group UI UX. I don't know if I count as being part of the working group just because of I develop tools, for example. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that's an appropriate place to ask my questions. And that's where I've been asking because I haven't found anywhere else to ask them, but it's always this back of my mind, like, is this the right place? Do I belong here? Sort of question. Can you, what the hell you write that on the channel header? So would these simple things already help or not? <laughs> I couldn't hear in the first part, sorry. So this was more or less a concrete question. How can we avoid that? Because everyone is welcome in these working groups. So would it already help if we put that as a channel description, as a channel header, that everyone is welcome here and so on? We discussed this and not all people may see that header. Um, Gitter has a, a good um, tool that element doesn't cost that upon joining a new channel, you have like a welcome or a warning pop-up. So uh, it could point to the get started page or it could point to this, don't be afraid to ask questions or whatever, um, which we scratch since element doesn't have it. So it depends on where people will be joining from. Is and that something? People... Yeah. I was, is that something you could do with the bot? I know you scratched the bot, but you could have the bot sit in channels and when people join, it could just send them a, them a direct message or something, you know, and not spam the channel. I mean, or you could spam yeah. the channel and say, hey, everybody, welcome Asunta to, you know, the UI UX channel or you know, that kind of thing. Um, just to, I don't know, maybe that's, maybe that's an option. We had this idea that it would either uh, each person joining or it would uh, send them this message every 24 or an X determined amount of hours. Um, but the people answering those questions were like, I will get this notification if it's in the chat. So I will think, oh, um, somebody is, someone is asking a question and then they will see that it's the bot. Or maybe in the weekends, they will see two messages at the same time and it will be the bot. Um, it could be sent privately, I think so. But it will, they would have to, uh, I remember I, I investigated it. Uh, they would have to accept these people, this bot um, sending them this message. Right. So if yeah, they I've don't accept that. it, uh, they won't get the message. So it's, it's not the, the overall BL uh, solution. In Element, you have to accept even, I don't know, if I go in Element and want to send you a message, Element will be like, it's wanting to send you a message. Do you accept or not? The bot is the same. You know, right. they decline once, the bot will never send them a message again. So it's, it's complicated. Wait, and what was the, inter so if, if the bot just, each time a new person joins for the first time, just send it like- We don't hear you super well, or is it only me? He's a bit low. Oh, sorry. Um, how about now? This is, I, what I was just thinking about if the bot just, every time a new person joins for the first time, just puts it in the chat, if that would be too much. I think this will have to be discussed with each channel. Yeah. I think some yeah. will, maybe the lobby will like it or maybe GTN will like it and maybe developers or any other channel won't. Yeah. I was thinking in the lobby, it might be too much because there's new people, probably new people all the time, but in the working groups. Yeah, how many people are in there? So the working, the UI UX group has, um, what does it say? For 19, no, 40, 40 ish people in there, something like that. I feel like I don't notice new people joining in working group chats all that often. 
Yeah, they're fairly stable, right? Yeah, 49 people in uh, UI UX. Um, I personally, I don't think it'd be a, I'd, I'd like to have a message when someone joins UI UX at least. Um, mm. I don't think that would put me out. I don't want it repeating every 24 hours. That'd be weird. Um, yeah, just but, the first time like this is, it, yeah, it lets people there know like this is a new person, like, you know, be nice. And also like you can put a message in there that like, you know, everyone's welcome to chat, not just official people, whatever. If, how much work, I mean, did, did you have the bot sort of running? I mean, I would be welcome to, I would, I'd be I'd be happy to volunteer the UI UX channel for if you want to just test out the bot and, you know, see see how it works. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll back you on that if you want to just try it out. Okay, I had it running. I had created my own room. So I, um, I wrote the script for the bot. I had to create another user. Uh, because the bot equals one like, mm -hmm. one account basically, and um, if I um, run the script, a message would be sent. So I would have to grab the um, element or matrix ID. I don't remember like the ID of someone joining. Um, it could I I could try. It. Um, I think that'd I be fun to try. Yeah, yeah and uh, or or we could we could try it in the um, the goat channel since it's even more friendly. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah. Okay, let me investigate, I can try it. I will write it down because I easily forget what. Yeah, I think that'd be super cool. Thank you. So I have one comment about this communication and, and the chats and so on, because also Eli was mentioning um, that one never knows where to ask the question or which question is appropriate for each one of the channels. And Pia, you have in this in this started kit um, a section for mailing list. Should we maybe rename that to communication and have um, subsection sections one for um, mailing list and another one for the different um, matrix channels and describe what is the content that is expected that you comment on those? Do you think that that would be too much? I don't think it would be too much. It would make it clear, but I think as maybe Ellie mentioned, like if we describe the tools working group is for people related to tools and such, but he created maybe a couple of tools and he's wondering, am I someone that could be in the working group? I think it's not so much um, the topics that would define the working groups, but people feeling identified if they could ask in the working group. Yeah, I think so, if we point the um, in the lobby channel, people tend to point towards where you should ask. I'm not sure if we should point towards the lobby channel itself. So if you have any question or if you're unsure where to go, go to the lobby and then they will point you. But I'm not sure if that's the best approach. So in particular with the working groups, I can imagine that struggle when you say, okay, do I, is this just people that are working full-time on the project? Do I really have a place to us there or can I say something or even join the room? So somehow to make clear that this is a place for you to ask if you're working on a type of, of activity, basically. Okay. I think a warning like that, even if you are just is anybody welcome, even if they are working just on one tool or one specific thing about UI or UX related to Galaxy, then they could go to UI UX channel or any other working group. Even if you are just making a tiny change, so that could be the idea. Question. Yeah, uh, no, go on, finish, Pia, sorry. Uh, go ahead. No, no, I just wanted to follow because I think uh, Pia has tried in, uh, in the uh, starter kit in the working group section to make it more uh, welcoming in the sense uh, um, this is not for like professional people paid in the working group. This is open to everyone. But do, do you uh, do you mean they are to add even in the description of the working working group? Or maybe maybe as a communication channel we have on one side a mailing list on the other side we have chat 
and describe that we have different um, channels in the different spaces mm, and show different yeah okay. but the, the problem that I see there is that it's going to be hard to maintain and if we create new channels we need to be editing but I, I guess that's fine mm -hmm. uh, but maybe say what is expected in each one of the channels so that people feel that their questions is legitimate for that place. Okay. I think the working groups item in the get started page reads in it points if you're interested in a particular area within Galaxy, then you can connect with a working group. Um the Pintador GitHub project, Gitter channel, Google Drive. So it now they read about it and with uh, Eli's feedback I realize it's if you want to know what the working group is working on, but not the fact that you may be part of the working group uh, as developing a tool, for example. It's more so um, investigate what they are working on and that's it. It doesn't feel open to go and ask and, and participate and such, even though it's in the take part and contribute to Galaxy uh, step. I'm reading if the working group page also has kind of um, a mention to that. Like, don't be afraid to join in and ask, but uh, it just points to the current set of the working groups. And it is confusing also in that sense. I think it could be visit in the get started page and also in the working groups page. Yeah, I would agree with that. Just like a couple of lines saying, you're welcome to ask questions relating to these subjects in these working groups. Um, even if you're not sort of formally, like you're not part of the group that's like leading it, making like strategic decisions, you're just developing stuff that's gonna be added in hopefully. Um, yeah. I did feel, feel the same um, feeling upon joining a working group because there, there aren't many people. Like the lobby has lots of uh, users. So you're, um, it gives the impression that the lobby is more welcoming and the working groups is more private. Like UI in UX has less than 50 users. So are those 50 users part of Galaxy itself? And I may not be part of it. Now, UI UX working group has 26. I think that's a bit um, scary if you aren't used to it. And if this warning isn't present also. I, uh, upon reading what the working groups were and, and investigating, I thought I was um, spying on people working in Galaxy and that I was that I could ask. I thought, oh, Galaxy is very open about people working there. And you can see their chats and you can see what they are doing. Hmm. Any other questions or idea related to this? Or to anything? Um, I want to say one thing. Um, First of all, I really, I really like having this like newcomer guide to Galaxy. I agree that it's, it can be really overwhelming and it's a huge project. Um, uh, but I wanted to mention, I feel like the, the like just the title of the button on the homepage like get started. Um, I feel like I feel like that's usually you know on the get started link on projects is usually like, you know, here's like two or three steps to like get it running or something like that. Um, this, I, I would suggest like maybe like, you know, galaxy guide or, you know, some, some, some wording like that maybe. Okay. I'm not sure. I like the idea, but I'm not sure if that point of view is um, more programmer based. Like if I'm a programmer, I wouldn't get started um, with installing and, and running my local version of Galaxy. But if I'm not some 
someone that programs, I don't have that idea in mind. Yeah, I mean, like, even for non programmers, like, if you're looking to use Galaxy, like, get started would be like, go to here's three servers you could use. Like, you know, uh, a very brief, like, pointer to, like, if you just want to get going here, go here. Um, but I, I just, yeah. like, um, yeah, I guess. I, I just thought that if I was visiting a project for the first time and I saw that button, I'd click it and yeah, have a different expectation. But um, you know, <laughs> maybe it's just me. I, uh, I had it in and maybe get started with our guide, maybe? Or maybe join the community because it's more a way to join, right? Even when you're a newcomer, you want to be a uh, community lead. But uh, uh, there isn't just a place to, for community people. It's for anybody. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the point is uh, what you really wanted, Pia, and what everyone wanted is to have a place where if you go on this page, you know this is where you should click. Yes. Okay. But I'm, yeah, it's, it's, it's true. It's maybe get started. It's not the right word. The best. Okay. Yeah. But I don't know what, what uh, but it's, it's, it's a good point. I think this is something we need to put more thought on. We'll check with other uh, communities, open source communities to see what they, I have found um, some communities that have this kind of guide for newcomers. I don't remember what they wrote, so we will revise and see. But yeah, it is a good point. Or like new new newcomer corner or something like that, or like Galaxy One Hundred One. I think that's already taken, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a good point, I think. Yeah. Yes. I will paraphrase it. Anything else that someone would like to address? I'm very interested in what, what Eli will find. Yeah. In reading this, because it's um, yeah examples of real newcomers that will not find their discipline there. So how is it going to be for you? That would be super interesting to know. Yeah. Yes, please give feedback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let you know how we get on. If there's something missing, maybe. Or something unclear of the working groups uh, chat. I don't want it to feel like any of what's written there is just for pros or the people that know for everybody. Um, okay, if that's uh, all the, thank you so much for, for joining. Um, thank you all for your feedback also. Um, I'm happy yes, with all the, the feedback, you. Yes, you, uh, good ideas. And thank you to, to Beana for being the best mentors um, <laughs> I, could ever, I could have ever had. Um, because you, we were the only one. You didn't have any other ones. <laughs> this is why we are the best. And um, because I we just, are online. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to uh, uh, raise the fact that now we will have another outreach um, session, I don't know, around. Um, it would be very, because now I think the Galaxy community has chosen to have like developers uh, in this round. So it would be very interesting to get uh, also your feedback uh, after or during the round, if anything was uh, um, like useful or not useful and how we can really help uh, uh, to onboard new developers. Because maybe that's an emphasis we haven't put much uh, on in this
I don't know if you have any feedback on the during the uh, like the contribution phase, uh, and you see that systematically uh, the outreachy are asking the same again, again, same question, and they are getting lost again and again with the same thing. Maybe this is something we can improve. Yeah, they will probably get stuck with something very specific. Hopefully not, but if they find a stone in their path, I would like to address it. Um, I try to make it as open as possible, this Get Started um, guide. Um, I, I think developers will go towards the description of the projects, hopefully, in the repositories that's planted in the working groups, but I know that that's something that you will get to uh, experiment. I think soon, like it's in January or so. Is it next month? Mm -hmm. Oh, next month is the contribution period and the internships in June, yeah. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, otherwise, I would like to thank everyone, and uh, especially Pia, for doing the work, the hard work, <laughs> and for everyone else coming and, uh, and uh, giving the feedback to Pia, which I think we are very, very helpful. Thank you. And yes, you thank you, Pia, you. for all the work. And thank you, Anne, for being a great commenter, too. Yes, I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.